Welcome to Cinema Magic. Today we'll show you a 2019 Russian science fiction action thriller film titled The Blackout. The film is about an event that suddenly plunges the entire world into darkness, rapidly destroying life on Earth except for a small area in Eastern Europe. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. At the beginning of the film, unidentified energy approaches an outpost of the military base. The soldiers get prepared for this uninvited thing, only to discover that these are creatures larger than humans. These creatures can move at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour. After this, we are taken 24 days before the events. We will see serviceman Oleg taking his girlfriend to his place after their date. In the next shot, we see a plane full of passengers suddenly lose power in midair. Suddenly, the entire world falls into darkness, except places like Moscow, Polaris, Ukraine, and Finland. Everyone at the hotel gathers in front of the TV screen. The reporter tells that we have lost contact with the majority of Russia's most populated areas. At this point, Embercom centers haven't reported any natural disasters. There's no response at this time from any phones, telegraphs, radios, or internet sites. All telecommunications have been compromised. Later, the military immediately sent a reconnaissance team to the power outage area to find out what happened. When they arrived at the nearby town, they found that only corpses were left. Not just humans, but animals like fishes, cats, and even butterflies are dead. One team is inspecting an apartment when someone attacks a soldier. However, he takes his rifle and runs away after jumping off a building. The soldiers try to shoot him, but he disappears into the darkness. A month passes similarly, but the government sees no progress in their research. They're still oblivious to what caused the blackout and the deaths. All former soldiers are drafted to the research teams, including Yura. He took a break from work to look after his mother suffering from dementia. The following day, a new batch of soldiers arrive at their post. Lieutenant Marina reveals that the forensic reports of the quarantine zone dead bodies have just been published. It says the cause of the death is neurotoxin poisoning produced by the body itself. This means the people were killed because something triggered their bodies to produce the toxin abnormally. Oleg and his girlfriend Lena are at their post getting ready to deploy to a quarantine zone for research. However, their plan is interrupted by the sudden ringing of alarms. The radar shows that something massive is coming their way from the forest. The soldiers have no view of the enemy, so they settle on fiery and random directions. The scene cuts to the next morning, and we finally get to see the chaos in broad daylight. The attackers were wild bears who killed and devoured many of the soldiers and wreaked havoc on the base. The incident is devastating, but also strange because the bears seem to have attacked strategically. In Moscow, it was discovered that some of the survivors from the edge of the quarantine zone now have abilities. One among them is Sasha, who appears to have a psychic connection to the unknown attackers. The morning after the attack, Sasha feels uneasy, almost as if he can feel the soldiers' fear when he fought the bears. He is then approached by a man named Zhenya who claims to be his ally. He reveals that many people are still alive in the quarantine zones but are being controlled by someone. Sasha is also connected to their minds because he was at the border of the circle of life when the blackout occurred. Zhenya doesn't disclose how he knows all this, which causes Sasha to panic. He calls the guards but finds out he has been talking to Zhenya in his mind and he's not physically present in the room. Meanwhile, in the army base, multiple teams of soldiers set off for different parts of the quarantine zones for their respective mission. A few hours later, the first team reaches a quarantined city where the plane had crashed. To their surprise, they are welcomed by the surviving humans. They are waiting with tanks, arms, and ammunition ready to fight the soldiers. Soldier Yura and the second team are with a press reporter named Olya. They reach a town safely, where they have to establish an observation camp for the next few days. Meanwhile, Oleg is with Group 3 entering a city called Kirov. A few days pass and the soldiers continue keeping watch in their respective areas. Then one day, a strange figure calling himself Eid approaches Sasha and asks for his help since Sasha's psychic link can locate Eid's brother Ra. He says that Ra is behind all of this. The lieutenant catches Eid and arrests them after he promises to explain everything he knows about the blackout. Later, Eid reveals that he's an alien from a distant star system that has long died out. Since their star system is no more, they now want to move to Earth because in their constellation, the star sun is still young enough and they believe it'll live long enough. Eid says that he arrived on Earth 200,000 years ago. Eid tells them that Ra wants to wipe out the entire human race so his people would have the planet to themselves. He caused a blackout and the deaths of several to put his plan into action. His next step is to use the surviving humans to fight the people inside the circle of heaven since he can control them easily. The lieutenant finds it hard to believe, but she has no room to distrust him after what they have faced in the past month. 
The most concerning part is that the aliens are arriving on Earth in two days, which means they have only 48 hours to defeat Ra. While the officials discuss their next step, Oleg and his group catch a kid trying to collect food from his store. Initially, they feel sympathetic and help him, but then Ra takes control of the boy and makes him attack the soldiers. They have to reluctantly shoot him dead and report the situation to the lieutenant. However, this is only the start of the fight. When it gets dark, thousands of Ra's puppets from the quarantine zone attack all three army posts, giving rise to a battle of colonization. Yura and his team are heavily outnumbered, so they send a flare signal to the base asking for reinforcements. The commander gets the soldiers ready when suddenly the sky lights up because of flare signals coming from all directions. The entirety of surviving humans have been outnumbered, making their loss seem near. Now their only hope is Eid and fortunately he's willing to help. He tells the lieutenant that they have to locate Ra with Sasha's help. Only when his brother is stopped, Eid can't control the people attacking the soldiers. The lieutenant brings Eid and his human associates, Jenya, to the army base where they have to find Sasha and help him locate Ra. In the meantime, Hira's team is ambushed to the ground and his fellow soldiers are killed one after another. At last, only two survivors remain, Kim and Olya. They have to find another group if they wish to stay alive. Hence, they get on a vehicle and make their way to Oleg's team. Elsewhere, Eads is helping Sasha focus so they can figure out where Ra is located. After trying for a while, Sasha finally sees him on top of a skyscraper in Kirov, controlling the human puppets. Eid helps Sasha calm down and suggests they quickly leave for Kirov. It's also the place where Oleg is stationed and where Olya and Yura are headed. Eid and the team are preparing to leave when they're informed that the puppets have attacked the Circle of Life as well. Not wasting more time, Eid, the lieutenant, and her soldiers leave for Kirov. Sasha is asked to stay at the base because his life must not be put at risk. On their way to Kirov, Eid reveals that he doesn't care about Sasha's life. He asks the guy to stay back because Ra could track his location, which would mean trouble for all of them. As he had predicted, Ra finds Sasha's location, resulting in several missiles being launched at the base. The soldiers try their best to fight back, but eventually, the entire base is destroyed and everyone inside is killed. The lieutenant loses her mind and blames Eid for killing her people. Eid claims that this was the only way they could run away from Ra without him being suspicious. The soldier's death was inevitable and, frankly, necessary to save humanity. The following morning, Yura and Olya find Oleg's team and a while later, the lieutenant and her group also join. The soldiers are told everything about Eid and the attack on the Circle of Life. This means that they are the only humans alive on Earth and they have to stop Ra to prevent humanity's extinction. They don't waste more time before making their way to the skyscraper. But on the way, their tanks are attacked by a massive crowd of human puppets. One man jumps on a vehicle with an explosive and initiates the battle. The soldiers remain inside the tank and fire the crowd in front of them. They don't stop so the enemy won't get a chance to climb the tanks and eventually reach the skyscraper. The commander and his soldiers decide to remain at the bottom of the building to deflect the enemy while the others climb upstairs. In a final showdown, Hira and Eid come face to face with Ra. Hira runs to attack him, but Ra is much stronger. He instead faces a better opponent, his brother Eid. They fight an intense battle. Meanwhile, the commander is struggling to hold off the puppets. When most of his soldiers have died, they're attacked by a vehicle filled with explosives. It causes an explosion, resulting in the deaths of all soldiers. The puppets are now free to enter the building to their master's aid. Ra figures out what is going on downstairs, but it distracts him, giving Eid a chance to land a fatal attack. He rips out a device from Ra's chest and thrusts a grenade into it, killing his brother at last. After his death, Eid gains full control over the puppets and kills them at once. Now the only humans alive are Hira, Oleg, the lieutenant, Olya, Alina, and Xenia. They don't feel the joy of victory as billions of dead bodies lie all around. Eid finally reveals that humans are rational beings with no love and compassion. Even when they show mercy, they will choose a path of violence one day or the other. This is why Ra wanted to end them as a species and ensure his people's safety. However, Eid has a different motive. He wants to be God and craves absolute power. He could have warned people long ago about the blackout, but he only came into action after it happened. This is because he wanted humans to die so they know his importance and see him as their messiah. An enraged lieutenant holds him at gunpoint, accusing him of killing billions just for his fantasy. Before she shoots, Xenia runs at Eid with a knife. Eid positions himself away from both of them, just in time for Xenia to stab the lieutenant. She's killed in the incident. Eid turns himself into Oleg's father to confuse him, but Xenia sees through his plan this time. He throws him from the roof, dying with him in the fall. Now the only people alive are an injured Yura, Oleg, Olya, and Elena. 
Later, we saw an alien ship descending from the sky next to a skyscraper, opening a hatch. But for some reason, the aliens don't come out. Elena, Oli, and Oleg decide to enter the alien ship, while the injured Yura shouts that they will all die. After entering the ship, they discover that all the aliens are still in their ship in Cairo capsules and have not woken up. Countdown timers are near the Cairo capsules, and the three main characters decide to break the pipes for oxygen supply, thereby killing them in the capsules without oxygen. When they're about to destroy the last tube, they realize that it delivers oxygen to the capsules with the aliens' children and decided not to break it. When the capsule timers reach zero, the capsules open, and alien children crawl out of their capsules. When they see people from planet Earth, the humans drop their weapons to prove that they are not any threat. And that's all about this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to her channel and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with such interesting movie recap videos.